Well, welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this edition of Who's Next. Today we're going to be going over, I should say up, to Stanley, North Carolina, where we find 13-year-old Nick Loden, who runs in quarter midgets. He runs Senior Honda, Senior Animals, Light 160, World Formula, Light Formula Mods. I think if they've got another class coming out, he's probably going to run that one too. So, Nick, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fine, man. So let me ask you, are you back in school? Yes. Yes, and you can say that with a lot of enthusiasm. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah. I remember that. And they're like, yeah, it's time to go back to school. So we know that you got a lot of racing going on. So the first question that I always ask everybody, what made you decide that you wanted to be a race car driver? Well, my dad raced late models for a long time, and I really like going and watching him. So I think that's what made me want to do it. Also, my, my dad took me to the quarter major track. I had no idea about him before he took me to watch. So. All right. So you basically grew up at the track then, you know, so you, uh, you were kind of introduced to racing through people that were already in your family. That's, that's great because I'm, I'm sure yeah. your dad's got a lot of knowledge about how to fix up your car and how to help maintain it and stuff like that. Is he your, is he your crew chief? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty much. So what's the name of your local club that you race at? NCQMA. The NCQMA. So how long have you been actually running at that track? Um, this, will, this is my eighth year running, and I've been running at NCQMA all eight years. All right. Do you run any USAC races as well? Yes. Okay. So you're going yeah, to... Yeah, I, I run every national race. So I started saying you're basically year. hitting all the national events then. All right. Yeah. So we've already kind of co covered, you know, what classes that you race in, but let's talk about your favorite track out of, you know, I know you're running all over the country, but which is your favorite track to go to? Kalamazoo, Michigan. Kalamazoo, it's Michigan. It's a real track. Now tell me, because yeah. I hear that from a lot of quarter midget racers. So tell me why that track is so special. It is so fast. It's Super banked, the same degree of banking all the way around. We're running a second faster than NCQMA, and it's bigger than NCQMA. It's really fast. All right, so it's really. all about the speed, man. Yeah. The need for speed. Because I would think, like a lot of you, would be like, okay, well, maybe Indy or Pocono, but uh, I just, it, it, it I seems. Like them. You don't like them? Parking at all. lot. Parking lot. Yeah, I do like parking lots. It's cool to be there because of the atmosphere, you know, and get a chance. I mean, you think about it, you got a chance to drive around that two and a quarter or two and a half mile Indy Speedway. Not a lot of people get to do that. Yeah, that's that just never gets old. It's really cool. That's really that cool. part of the tracks, it's, I love that part, but I just don't like racing on parking lots. So let me much ask you, track. If, if next year you went back to Indy, and they put like, I don't know, a couple, two or 300 of those cars, like you guys all do that parade lap. But the guy up front said, you know what? Today, we're gonna run three laps and it is a race. Which one of your cars would you drive to make sure that you could win that race? I don't know, I'd be worried. I don't wanna blow my engine. <laughs> so we have to like moderate our speed going around the track so we don't blow our engines up. I don't know. I'd probably take my Light World Formula or my Senior Animal. Light World Formula or Senior Animal. All right. So uh, we're going to play a little game, and it's called Get to Know Nick in 60 Seconds. Are you ready to play? Yep. All right. So what's your favorite food? Pulled pork. Pulled pork. Okay. Favorite video game? Fortnite. Fortnite. All of you guys are playing Fortnite. What's with that game? Uh, it's really fun. It's really, really fun. fun game. Every, it's great. Every young racer I talk to, actually every old racer I talk to, I'm like, what's your favorite bit? Fortnite, Fortnite. I guess I'm going to have to check that game out. Am I too old to play? No. No, okay. <laughs> Good answer. All right, what's your favorite <laughs> TV show? The Flash. The Flash. Favorite color? Red. Favorite superhero? Flash. Favorite subject in school? 
Um, math, probably. I also like science and social studies. Okay. And what is your favorite racing series? Um, NASCAR and IndyCar. I like them both. You like them both? All right. Who's your favorite race car driver? NASCAR, like Ryan Blaney, and IndyCar, like Will Power. All right. Good. You know what? We have a couple things in common there. I like both those drivers. So, do, really? you, have a pet? do you have a pet? I have two pets. I have a dog and a cat. A dog and a cat. So, what kind of dog do you have? A golden retriever. Golden retriever. We got other things in common. I got two of them sitting right out the door wondering what the heck's going on in there. And, and mm -hmm. what's his name or her name? Zoe. What is it? Zoe. Zoe? Z O E Y. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We had a cat named, we have a cat named Zoe now. Gosh, this is kind of, we have a lot of stuff <laughs> in common here. So let's, let's talk and uh, do a quick rundown of your racing career. Um, kind of highlight some of the big races that you've won. I see a lot of trophies back there. I see guitar. I see just a whole bunch. So just give us a quick one rundown on what some of the major races that you've won and, and why those were so important to you. Okay, well, I started in 2011, and um, I've raced a lot of races and traveled a lot, but I think some of the biggest races I've won, I've won the Brickyard um, four times in one day, two years in a row. That was amazing both times. And I've won four national championships and seven Dixie Regional Championships. All right. Well, that's pretty impressive. So where did you win the guitar at? I see it in the back back there. Where'd that come from? Nashville? That was from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. From Music City. That's pretty much the same as they give away to the cup drivers and to the Xfinity drivers. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so they give us every year guitars. So how many wins? Do you know how many wins that you actually have? Last time I checked, we had, um, I had 160. 160 wins. Yeah. You might have just won a new car for being the highest driver with the most wins. I didn't say what <laughs> size of car. It might be like a little matchbox or something, but that's a, that's a lot of wins, man. So what? let's talk about, do you remember the first win that you got? No, I, I was seven years old. That was a long time ago. I'm sure I was really excited, but that was a long time ago. Wow, seven years old. So let me ask you something. Whether you were seven years old or now you're 13 years old, there's still nothing like grabbing that checkered flag and taking that victory lap, is there? No. Yeah, there's nothing like it. Yeah. So is there, have you ever had any strange things go on on your victory lap? Have you tried to get like, you know, spin out, hit the wall or anything like that? Not yet, but I don't want to jinx it. I have dropped the checkered flag. I actually broke the checkered flag four times in a row at my home track. Well, how'd you do that? We, we had our checkered flag was like taped together and it's good breaking. It got it, it like barely clipped my tires break off. All right. Well, that's not as bad as some. I've had some that said I tried to do a burnout. I lost control. I hit the wall. The checker flag flew over my visor. I couldn't see and I hit the wall. So just breaking the checkered flag, at least that didn't cost you a lot of money. That's uh, so you're pretty good. There. I've tried to do stuff like NASCAR drivers do and sprint car drivers do on their victory lap. It did not work out. It didn't work out. <laughs> Either that or it's really pitiful. <laughs> well, you know, you're getting practice for when you get up to that level. Then you'll be like, I got this thing down pat. But 160 times to take a victory lap, you should be like the king, the expert of the victory laps. I don't know if, I ha if I've ever talked to anybody that's got had that many wins. So really? I, know, I know that being a race car driver, you have to sacrifice a lot of things that normal kids get to do. So talk to me just a little bit about what some of the sacrifices are and some things that you've had to give up. Because uh, we know that you're going to have a lot of young racers out there that are looking at you as kind of like one of the big stars in, in quarter midget racing. And, you know, so maybe you can give them some advice. I, I've i sacrificed, like, doing sports I kind of wanted to do and stuff. But, like, people make the real sacrifices are my parents. I mean, they miss work. They take time off. They stay up all night working on my car when I 
can't help them and stuff. Some parents make a lot more than I have. Well, I've always said, if you've any, watched any of my shows, I've always said that the hardest working people in racing are quarter midget parents. So we talked a little bit before the show that you have some, maybe some different plans for 2019. You want to share that a little bit with us? I plan to run a pro late model in 2019. I'm mostly just going to practice it, but I think we might run that towards the end of the year. I'm also going to run some quarter midget races. That's the plan right now. So. So you know that the workload on mom and dad is going to get a lot less when you go to a late model than it is with quarter midgets. I don't know. My dad's still up every night working on the late model. He does a lot of work to get that thing ready. Well, just think about it, though. You're only going to take one late model to the track. You're not going to take five. Yeah, that's true. So the races are going to be a track. little bit longer. Less work, yeah. So are you excited about the opportunity to get in the late model? Have you have you been out and practicing it at all yet? No, it's still not finished being built. It's almost done, actually. But I, yeah, I haven't even sat in it or anything yet. I don't have a seat or anything for it. Yeah, well, that's got to be, I mean, that's a big jump. That's got to be really exciting for you. Yeah. So I'm really talk. excited, but I'm also nervous. Are, you are? Yeah, oh, I'm really I did, but I'm also nervous too. Right. So, do you have a simulator? No. All right. Well, you might. Want I mean, to... my dad wanted one, but we we just can't get one. Yeah, you might want to think about that. That's uh, that's yeah. something that would really help you get a lot of seat time. And here's how you sell it. Is your dad in the room? No. Okay. This can be between you and I then. Here's how you sell your dad on getting you a simulator. Be like, Dad, if I crash the simulator, I just hit the reset button. You don't have anything that you have to repair. I can go to different tracks all around the country and get a lot of seat time. And we don't have to travel. We don't have to spend gas. And we're going to be bringing out something new here in the next few weeks for uh, people that are actually running on simulators where we can actually be a part and kind of watch you race and then give you some pointers and some advice from some of the top people in the industry. So... I'm on your side when it comes to the simulator things. So don't tell your dad, though, so he can't watch the show now. You know that. We're going to have to ban him from the show. All right. So yeah. let's talk about your racing goals. Where do you see yourself in the next three years? And then let's even look out five years. Where, where, does, where do you want to be at? Um, I think I'll still be racing late models probably, but maybe pursuing, like, trying to get into NASCAR trucks, K and N, Arca, Indie Light, something like that. And there's a lot of stuff I could get into in three years. Right. So if you had to choose, I mean, are you going down this open wheel path, or do you think you're going down this stock car path? I I don't know. I really don't know. I kind of like stock cars better, so probably stock cars. But um, well, here's one thing I can share have- with you. There's a lot more opportunity there you know, than maybe in the open wheel side. So, um, and again, you're, you're at a perfect age for this right now because things are changing in the NASCAR stock car world. You know, um, NASCAR bought ARCA, so we're probably going to see the ARCA and the k and series probably combine here over the next couple of years, uh, which is going to bring up the car counts. It's going to be really good racing and a great way for you to be able to, to learn. And you can go out and run the cars tour like on the East Coast. That's a great series to run in. Um, so I think that's uh, a lot of good opportunities, you know, and the other thing for you is that you're a part of the sport right now where there's probably more talent than, I mean, I'm almost 60 years old, so I've been around a long time and I don't think I've ever seen as much young talent as there is out there right now. Do you kind of agree with that? Yes. I think it's just because like, Quarter midgets, like, have never been as big as they are now. And, like, kids my age have been always been, like, racing as much as they are now. So, yeah, more, getting more experience young. Yeah, I think everybody took some notes from, like, Jeff Gordon and Kyle Larson and Joey Logano. And they looked at that. And yeah. finally the light switch kind of flipped on. And they're saying, man, this is a good path to go. So, what do you think about, like, road racing? Would you be ready to do something like that? 
I I don't really know. I've never raced anything road course. I mean, I've driven it on an iRacing simulator at PRI, and uh, <laughs> I wasn't that great at it. Yeah, so well, I've never a, raced. It's something that you're going like to have that. to kind of pay attention to because all these series now are running road course races, and um, so kind of get your feet wet. Another another reason to get a simulator you can run on road courses. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Yeah. All right. So what do you like to do when you're not racing? Um, playing Fortnite. Um, I run cross country. That's, and I also like to ride my scooter. I pro scooter, skate parks and stuff. All right. So you run cross country. That's very good for your cardiovascular. So what is the longest distance that you've ever run? Four miles. Four miles. I haven't really ran that far. And, and you did that. How long did it take you to run four miles? What's your best time? Um, I was only once because we got in trouble at practice and they didn't find it. Oh, they did. <laughs> okay. No. All right. So tell us something about you that most people wouldn't know. That little secret that you have and something that you would like the race fans to know about you, again, that they, they don't currently know about. That I first started racing, like, I had lots of trouble. I never made a race at the Brickyard till three years ago. I made one car, and that was before that. Other times, I never made anything. I didn't win my first national race till three years ago at Pocono. I won one. Then last year, I won a lot. I just, like... I wasn't always really good at racing. It took a lot of effort and work to get to where I am now. But the most important thing is you stuck with it. It'd been easy to give up, right? Oh yeah, I had a few moments along the way, but. All right, so for all of you young race car drivers that are out there watching this show, I want you to listen to what he just said. He didn't go out and tear the, the world up at first, but now look at him. He's one of the top quarter midgets in the country. Why? Because he didn't give up and he kept honing his craft. And I applaud you for that. I, I think that's, uh, I think that's really, really cool, man. I, 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 uh, I appreciate that effort. So do you want to talk about any of your sponsors before we wrap the show up? Um, Ingersoll Rand, they've been with me since I was a junior. I have AFCO, my grandpa, well, my grandparents, um, RE suspension, CSI shocks. Anybody else? Um, no, that's it. I forgot to say, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. So do you have a website that you want people to go visit? Uh, no, I don't have a website. I have a Facebook page. Okay. What's your so. Facebook URL? Nick Loden Racing. Nick Loden Racing. So there you see it on the bottom of the screen right now. Go to Facebook, Nick Loden Racing. Make sure to like his page and then share that with all of your racing friends. Do you have an Instagram account yet? Uh, yeah, I have my current name is nloden43, but I'm changing it to Nick Loden Racing. So. You're going to change it to Nick Loden Racing too. So there you've got it. Check him out on Facebook. Check him out on Instagram. Nick, what's your next race coming up? Um, coming Georgia this weekend. This weekend. And you're yeah, going to be running how many cars there? Three. Three different classes there. Well, we want to wish you all the luck. I want to thank you for being on the show. Um, let's look at uh, coming back maybe later in the year and maybe revisiting us. So are you going to be going to Indy for the USAC banquet? Yes. Are you gonna? Are you collecting? Are you collecting some hardware there? Yeah, I've got one championship this year. You have one championship. One that, and that's in which car? Senior Honda. Senior Honda. So there you've got it. Your USAC Senior Honda champion already has that clinched. Um, I'll be in Indianapolis, so I hope to see you there. And again, thank you for coming on the show. Tell your mom and dad thank you for all the hard work that they put in, and all of you. Quarter midget parents out there, again, thank you for everything that you guys do. Um, you guys are really making a difference in the motorsports world. And all of us on this side of the 
the racing world. We really appreciate what you're doing. So Nick, good luck this weekend. We'll see you back here at the end of the year. And all of you that are watching at home, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to go out and share this show with everybody. Remember, if you've missed any shows, you can go to raceface.tv and catch up there. That's where Nick will be, uh, his show will be on there. And it will also be on Facebook where you're probably watching it right now. So again, thanks to all of you for tuning in and we'll see you back here in two weeks.